Hey everyone, D Dub Squizzy here. Welcome back to Neverwinter Nights. All right, into the beggar's nest we go. Hello. So you can learn if you want to talk to that dude for any longer that there's a guard who went missing named uh, Walters, I believe. I don't think it's an actual quest from the captain to find him. The captain just gives you the quest. He's part of like the main quest in the area anyway. Alright, so this whole district is, like, infested with zombies. And occasionally some ghouls, depending on your level and whatnot. But mostly zombies. We'll be spending the majority of this episode clearing out just the district in general. Oh, oh there's a ghoul lord. They're up there attacking an innocent civilian. I would worry more about the civilian if it changed anything. The issue I have with, with those encounters there is that uh, if you save a person, and I'll try, right? There's three people who are getting killed in this place. But saving them doesn't do you any good at all. Like, nothing changes. Does that actually slow them? It actually does. Yeah, see, they run off, but you don't, get, you don't even get any good guy points for saving their lives. Oh, no, 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 no. Stop that ghoul lord right now. Okay. They need to just not shoot ghouls and zombies. They will kill those two. Those two have their own quest. I need to run around and clear out the area. Because these things will just attack him anything and everything they can get their teeth around. Alright, that guy can give you some basic information, nothing you really need to know. He's just a regular commoner. There's a zombie warrior. And some weak zombies. Don't worry about the, the field around these ghoul lords either. You, if you follow this walkthrough, and this is the last place you get to, you'll probably have the same type of enemies that I'm fighting right now. Which means you'll be dealing with ghoul lords as well. Don't worry about the field around them, it's just a doom thing that will like... It's an like anti-bless, so it's not really that dangerous. It's just sort of a slight annoyance. And its damage reduction doesn't reduce your physical damage, it reduces any extra magical damage. Uh, there's extra fairy dust. Cyril's Baker Shop. That's another one of those. The last one is in this district as well. Okay, so this, I believe, is, uh... Oh, I can never remember his name. I don't think it's Jermsey, but it might be. The brother of a guy who joined a cult recently. He has his own quest line, and he's also pretty important to the plot around here. And uh, another one of the main dudes in the area wants you to find him. Alright, let's just make sure there aren't any more zombies wandering towards the middle. I don't need them doing that. Oh, they're killing another citizen. I, I guess I can help. <clears throat> I guess I can help. There's a bunch of them next to the gate. We're just gonna go on a killing spree of these things. I can turn quite a few of them, but the ghoul lords would not die if I turned them. I think they would probably run, which for them is super annoying, because they're fast. Alright, she'll run off. And I'll kill this thing. Oh, 
Come on. Well, like three of those now. Oh, there goes Doom. caught me in their Venn diagram. However, will I survive? I think I've taken out the majority of them in this portion of the streets. Hopefully the middle will be safe now. And I can get back to where I was. I'll grab this chest on the way there. Alright. I try to follow my system of exploration. But, um... Section in this area often can kind of be difficult to get everything. You might miss a couple loot points. Some boxes, barrels, and chests are in between, like the sides in the middle, and it, it can be easy to overlook or forget one or two. But nothing really that much to worry about. And I do my best to get it all. Ah. It's not Jermsey, that's someone else. I think. Okay, so, he has given me the ward stone that will let me enter the cult hideout if I want to. Taste of my wrath. Sure, just run into the wall. That's, how did you know that's what I wanted you to do? Yeah. The AI is astounding. Okay, so this is the cold hideout. We're not dealing with that in this... Well, we might deal with it in this episode. I don't think so, but we might. But I'm not dealing with it right now. Okay, Doom is wearing off. It might just get reapplied again, though, because here's a ghoul lord. Yep, there it goes. That there is the sundial door in this area. I don't think I pointed out the one in the peninsula. I wasn't even really thinking about it at that time. That one was over next to, uh, to the, the woman I rescued from the in the corner. Who I brought back to the city gates. There are two people you rescue. There's Master Johns, I believe his name is, in the middle area, like right up past the guards. And then to the left of that, if you're going up the, the stairwell, all the way to the left and then down in the corner is where the woman is at that she can rescue. And she has one of those next to her as well. That's for anyone playing a mage. Otherwise, that information is useless to you. Alright, so normally, the Beggar's Nest is one of those areas that I can never fully clear the map of. They just don't let you reach enough of it. So it's probably going to have some black spots on it for the entire time. Not sure why I can't light those on fire with my fiery weapon. Alright, so here you can see the pile of bodies that Marcus left in his wake. This is from Marcus Penhold. 
who is a wizard. His brother is over in the Helmite Shrine in the middle of the area, waiting for him to return. The staff is worth like a thousand gold, if you want to sell it. You have a couple ways to proceed with that quest. You can give the guy both for free, which is kind of like the good guy thing to do. Or you can sell the journal and the staff to him. If you're doing that, I'd recommend you sell him the journal. And then he won't have enough to buy the staff. And then you keep that and kind of just insult him. And he'll leave, cursing your name. Alternatively... You can sell him the book, give him the staff, kill him on his way out, and then kill the Hell Knight as well. But it's all dependent on how evil you want to be. Alright, so this here's the warehouse. Uh, we won't be clearing that out until later as well. And this building that's gated off is the Neverwinter Academy, the one that got attacked in the prologue. Which I think it's cool they actually added it into the game itself. I mean, it makes sense, right? It is in the city, but a lot of games wouldn't have even thought about doing that. I always think it's a cool touch. Alright, she has a name, but she's just like another commoner that doesn't matter. Perish as you should! Gotta make sure that ghoul lord over there doesn't run off to try and kill those halflings. So one of the more annoying thing about fighting zombies, they're slow enough and they shamble at you, so you don't really get attacks of opportunity if they go running up to you. Okay, that zombie has just finished killing one of those civilians. There's one down here as well, normally. I think she's dead now. I think there's an encounter right here. Somewhere around here. Maybe it's further down. We'll definitely be finding it pretty soon. Let me grab these so I don't forget about them. This here is Crestle's house. He's where you learn about the Sword Coast boys. Him and Gemini are the ones that give you the information on the two paths you can take to reach the end of this district. You don't have to, uh, to meet them first, but they give you the information you need. There's a plus one club in this room as well. Okay, so he tells you about the Sword Coast boys, his former adventuring party, who gave in to the creature Golnan, which is the Yanti, that made all the zombies, and she turned him into a powerful undead along with the rest of his adventuring gang. The only two members of the gang that were not turned are Walters and Crustle. Walters became a guard, and Drawl abducted him. He's still alive, but he's in Drawl's possession, and then Crestle there, they were trying to kill. Drawl's kind of a secondary antagonist in this little storyline. Alright, well I think I've just killed the last of the zombies and ghouls that prowl around. Looks like there's a different fire animation if you do over 10 points of fire damage. Yeah, it's the big shroud of flame instead of just a little, like, burst. I've never noticed that before. 
It's pretty cool. Taste of my rock. Of course. You get stuck on the little stair somehow. And all of these are locked. Oh no, my protections and powers are wearing off. Dang it. Well, I don't think there's any zombies left, so I can just rest. It's too heavy. It's difficult to carry. Frankly, just running in and killing all the ones on the streets should allow the soldiers to come out and, and kill the rest. But they won't. How close am I to leveling up again? I might level up by the end of this quest line, but I'm not certain. 5,000 is quite a bit of ground to cover. I guess it's less than 5,000. It's, it's closer to 4,000. That's a really tough chest. It just absorbed 29 physical damage. Alright, there is another attack that happens. I think it's right around here. Where are you? There they are. This is the last group. Prepare to be eviscerated. No escape. Bloody you dead. You will die. No escape. Well, that slow effect doesn't last very long, does it? I think it does make them attack slower, though. Mainly if, there's, if it's an enemy that has multiple attacks, I think it'll take some away. Dester's assassins are just terrible. Last one of Fenthic's quests. Alright, so now I'll go talk to those two halflings. I think I picked up this barrel. Yeah. You wish you were uh, dead. You dead. Uh, I'm dead. Whatever. We can find new things, dear. You just. Alright, so they want me to find Hector the Wheelwright and bring him there. He's in, like, the one house that I haven't explored in this place so far. Alright, so I don't think there's anything up... Did I get those? I did. 
I don't think there's anything up on this wall. You can find like a guard patrolling, talk to him for some basic info. Nothing very special. But it is more of the map to clear out. I want to see if I can get the, the map to auto clear. I know I did it once, but I don't know how. Because I kind of remember like doing this every single time running along the outskirts. Clear it off as much as possible. But it never really seems to do the trick. Okay, so I can meet with the halfling, uh, and then the other guy, yeah, Harbin and Drake. He's, Drake lets you know about Crestal and Gemini, if you talk to them before finding, or if you talk to him before finding them. I've already found a bull, so I don't really need to speak to him at all. Well, hello to you. All right, he doesn't have anything to sell. I wasn't certain if he did or not. He does not. And like all of these inns and stuff, there are a bunch of rooms to loot upstairs. Ooh, that's heavy. It's difficult to carry. Oh man, I rolled really bad on my strength advantage this time. I only at 17. That's about as low as I can get, I think. Taste of my rock. These rooms are all smaller over on this side. Let the earth take you. I know, not very exciting watching me run around and loot yeah. some rooms. But you never know what you'll find in these things. Sometimes it's stuff that's really helpful, sometimes it's just more loot. But all the little money really stacks up over time. I will say about the enhanced editions, the pathfinding seems worse than it used to be. There was a big old pathfinding update that was supposed to make the AI much smarter about figuring out where it needs to be and how to get there. And all I can see that came from it is uh, got stupider. But I deal with it anyway, because like it or not, it's here. All right, so this is the uh, this is Bertrand Penhold. All right, so you got 150 XP and then 400 gold. Could have made more gold if I sold the staff, but it's 100 XP for it, so I think that's worth it. Alright, so he has movement, fortification, 
I think it just has basic temple stuff. Yeah. Alright, so now we have this guy. Yeah, the map is not cleared. Before talking to him, I want to come over here. That there is the last of the companion, uh, companion quest items. It is a long day. Alright, now he should just follow me right there. You definitely want to clear the area and kill those assassins before recruiting this guy, because if you try to run out with him and come across some enemies, he'll try to fist fight them, and he has the hit points of a commoner, which is to say none. He'll die in, like, moments, and then the quest is kind of screwed. Alright, 100 XP. My quest is done. Now then, let's run off to the cult house. I'm not going to go in there right now. But I want to go running over to it. Okay, so I'll give Fanthic the last note. Hey, I managed to successfully persuade him once. Got an extra 50 gold. Alright, so now I want to go complete those companion quests, because I can. There's six of them, and uh, once you, I don't know what level it is exactly. I think it's level five or six is what you have to be before they'll actually tell you their full quest lines. And then you just have to have the item and give it to them. If you're past that level, you can just pick them up and talk them all the way through.
right. So that's all six of them finished. Even if you don't want the items that they give you, it is worth uh, doing just so that you can get the experience. Each one of those quests is worth 100 experience. Wow, that didn't fully heal you. I just don't like seeing everyone else hurt. Whoa. There we go. Okay. So, with those out of the way, I can drop the various tokens and whatnot that they gave me. I'm pretty sure that's all of them. Two gems, two contracts, the token, the feather. Yeah, that's six. Um, actually, I gotta go sell. And so let's see what we got here. So Tomy's is a, a dexterity ring for rogues, really. This is, yeah, the Constitution amulet from Grimna, which would be a good amulet if this wasn't on the table as well. Extra strength and immunity to fear, yeah. Um, not that. This thing regenerates you, so I'll definitely be taking that. And then Lanu gave, yeah, the Pendant of the Elf, which becomes pretty awesome later, but right now isn't all that necessary. This is only my level 4 bag. Not level 4, 40% bag. And so the ones that I'm not using, I just throw in here. Oh, right. And then the Belt of the Performer, extra Perform, Persuade, and Charisma. Because I need those for their future quests. Can I help you? I have now burned all of the plague victim pyres, so I don't need to keep the torch around anymore. Put that over there. This is just restoration, don't need to scroll. Alright, so I can put the rings down here so I can identify whenever I need to. Which one gets switched out? Okay. There we go. That way if I have anything I can't identify, you just pop that baby on, and you probably can. The game usually won't give you magical items that are more than five lore points ahead of you, if you have a lore point for every level. There are a few instances where it happens, but they're more of guaranteed drops that just happen to be powerful magical items. And then this, of course, is the Snake Cold Wardstone. So, now I have an extra strength point. Even with all of my buffs off, I can carry around my stuff comfortably. Which is very nice, I've been waiting for that. And this thing gives you an extra regeneration point, as well as charisma. So it's helpful to keep around. Now, you can't complete, there are three different stages to each of those companion quests. The second chapter and the fourth chapter, I believe. Maybe it's the third chapter, I don't think Lost King counts as its own thing. So it'd be the, the second and the third as well. They'll show up in, you gotta find their items, and then bring them back to them. And they will upgrade those items they gave you. If you don't have the ones they gave you, you can't continue the quest lines. So, you must get all six of them each chapter in order to get the, the six in the next. So, I'm gonna be holding on to those. Alright, but that is it for this one, then. I think this has gone on long enough, so the next episode will be clearing out the cult, taking down the warehouse, getting through the little cave section underneath it, and then we'll get to the great graveyard and have to go through the warrens. The warrens are big, and it might be a little long of an episode, um, but that should finish out all of chapter one, except for the epilogue portion, where you have to go after and actually get the cure. Um, but that is it for this one, so thank you all for watching, I'll see you in the next one.